What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video we're going to be talking about the Keychron K10 Pro Wireless Wired Keyboard. I have it right here in front of me. Hopefully I do this video right and you can actually see it. Now, uh, this thing cost me around $210. Well worth it, wireless, wired. is well built. This thing is really heavy and really well put together. Now, I'm looking down and up because the keyboard's right in front of me and I'm recording on my cameras the same time I'm recording on OBS. So it's a mechanical keyboard. It's a full-size keyboard. It even has extra keys over here. So it goes up to F15 where normal keyboards stop at F12. Uh, this is both Mac OS and Linux compatible. It also, well, Windows compatible too. This is a doubles as a Siri button, which I find really cool. And I chose the red switches because it's what I'm used to. Now, this is compatible with VIA software for key remapping, macros, things like that. Uh, it's a double shot PBT key caps. So again, very well built. RGB backlight, as you may be able to see, it's, it's lit up. Well, I hope you can. I didn't expect for the camera to go on like it did like uh, with the backlight, so sorry about that. I guess it wasn't lit up enough for them. Now, again, compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Linux. It also has built-in Bluetooth 5.1, USB-C Type-C to wired, and uh, it has a very good cable. As you can see, it's, this is a braided cable. Very fancy, very nice. These switch types, so hop swappable, supports various MX uh, mechanical switches like Cherry, uh, Gatron, Kai, or Panda, etc. And it has a 4000 milliamp battery up to 100 hours on the lowest brightness, which is great, by the way. And uh, full size layout, of course, but they have other ones that are half layout, you know, 65, whatever you want. And it's got a PCB mounted screw in stabilizer for less wobbliness and smooth performance. This thing does not move at all, which is nice. On the back of this, it does have, I'm gonna unplug it right now because I don't really need it to be plugged in because we need to do this video. Doing the best I can with this. If we flip it over, we're gonna flip it over as nicely as I can. Uh, if you notice, there are actually Oh, I don't know if you know. There you go. There's two types of stands in here. So there's a small one and a full size stand. So you can choose how far you want it off the ground, uh, which is also super nice. And there are buttons up top on this side here. There's the USB-C right there. Ugh. Digging in the dirt was not fun. And I believe this one switches you between Windows, Android, Mac OS, and iOS. So that's what that one right there does. Again, I'm sorry about the brightness of that uh, thing I didn't want to turn on. And this is for Bluetooth on. And on the, on the, on the left-hand side, Bluetooth on. On the right-hand side, it's wired. And in the middle, it's just off. So if I turn the Bluetooth on, it becomes Bluetooth. Now, pairing this thing is pretty easy. Uh, I believe it was just hold the function and then actually I completely forgot how to pair this thing. Go figure. I think it was just F1, this button right here for a couple seconds and then it just showed up, but I don't really remember or it was either this and this. It's been a while. I already have it paired. So it's like, I don't need to really remember. I'll look it up eventually again so i've been gaming with this thing uh we beat silent hill 2 with it again uh, this time i beat it a lot faster than 14 hours that was nice uh i've been driving with it playing a bunch of other games hogwarts legacy and uh there was an issue with the b key but i solved it by reflashing the firmware and that made it work really well so uh, do i have any other complaints about this I'm not even sure. You probably can't hear that clackiness. Uh, give me a second to turn off the noise suppression on my... 
and let me get the microphone all the way up down in there. So now you know exactly what it sounds like. The VIA software, I guess we can go over that, is very cool. Again, it lets you deal with your lighting. Uh, it lets you deal with programming your keys, macros, all that stuff. You name it, it lets you do it. And lets you do it via web browser. Now you need a compatible web browser for this to work, so it needs to be able to detect it. I have gotten it to work in Linux, so that's good. There is also a VIA app image that you could definitely use. And I did use that at one point. It works very well. For the price, for the builds, for everything that I've experienced, I would honestly say that this is a fantastic keyboard to own. I've given it a very long time to use it. I didn't just jump right into review after a day because that would have been silly. Uh, it came very well packaged. I got to say that at least. Very well packaged. Very well done. And I definitely did enjoy it when I first pulled it out and I made it wireless and everything was great to go and it's just like hey it works on my phone it, it works on Mac OS it works on Linux it works on everything and I'm just sitting here like damn that's a pretty damn good keyboard now what first draw my attention to this thing is the fact that it said it was open source you can compile the firmware you can make changes to the firmware and apply it here you can even make this static white light lighting by disabling the RGB by uh, flashing the other K10 Pro uh, profile or firmware and it just ends up no longer being RGB which I did try and did end up just being normal light static lighting which was kind of cool. The FN key is very helpful for when switching tracks, playing tracks, turning volume up and down and as well as F5 and so on like you get to do whatever you want with this thing like there's even a thing here for brightness which is nice. Now, I mean, there's not much else to say. It's a great keyboard. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. You guys can check it out. I just wish they would update the firmware because uh, it's been since 2003 that they've done this, but I don't really see a point to just, I guess, give support for the stuff that you still sell. I mean, the uh, non-RGB one got an update, so maybe this one should as well. I'm just saying, support what you still sell. That's what all companies honestly should do. Now, this thing is like heavy. Uh, this thing weighs a little more than my laptop does. And it's a gaming laptop. It's a 15 inch laptop. That should tell you something. It's getting heavier as I'm holding it here. So it honestly... This is built for your desk. This is not built for travel, not by any stretch of the imagination. And um, I'm hoping to get a lighter wireless keyboard to put in my backpack. I think that would be cool to bring it with my laptop because I should have got the mechanical switches on my laptop. Anyway, uh, I guess this has been my review on my way of the Keytron K10 Pro full size keyboard, the RGB one, Bluetooth and wired. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And I'll see you guys next time.